ladies, gentlemen, and otherwise, we are in uncertain times. Over the course of these past few weeks, debates have ignited over which browsers Chrome users should be migrating to, if now is the right time to abandon Twitch in favor of YouTube, and, for many Magic the Gathering players out there, if Unfinity is either a bad product or the worst one ever. Hello folks, I'm your host Comrade Bard, and you are listening to Bardstock Hobby Radio. Spoiler season has been in full swing for Magic the Gathering, and will continue to be until the end of time. With little breathing room between Dominaria United and Warhammer, and now without any between Warhammer and Unfinity, Wizards of the Coast has gone from showing some of the greatest and best received cards of all time to some of the greatest and dividedly accepted cards of all time. And finally, to what some are saying are the worst, and what are certainly the most controversial cards of all time, of course barring any classic cards that may have depicted a certain clan. What was once merely a quandary over the presence of stickers in sanctioned eternal formats has now devolved into a full-blown riot over the quality of Unfinity as a set and the legality, or lack thereof, of many of its cards. And by riot, I don't simply mean a choice between a plus one plus one counter or haste, but rather that many Magic the Gathering players are ready to assemble with their torches and pitchforks and take their frustrations directly to Mark Rosewater's tumbler. For those against Unfinity, the consensus seems to be that they were hoping for a product that would introduce fun explorations of existing design spaces to eternal formats. But what they have instead received is a product in which those cards are being marked with acorns and are therefore illegal to play, while cards that push new sticker and attraction mechanics make up the bulk of what's being printed as legal. There are those too whose disdain for the product is rooted in any uncards being legal at all, frequently stating that these fun gimmick cards have no place in a proper and sophisticated game of Magic the Gathering. Of course, those with the most passionate opinions are the ones who you are more likely to hear from, and we here at Bardstock Hobby would like to hear about your thoughts on the matter. Are you unhappy with Unaffinity for any reason? Or do you disagree with the detractors? Are you looking forward to the set? Don't hesitate to write in. In other news, Warhammer 40k Commander products will be launching on the same date as Unfinity, but this set faces a different controversy altogether. Looking past the usual arguments against universes beyond, a far more consumer-unfriendly problem is afoot with product pricing. While all product prices are on the move at all times, the Warhammer deck prices are showing unprecedented levels of fluctuation on Wizards' own official Amazon storefront. Traditionally, Commander decks have been priced at around $40, with bundles containing all of the decks being offered at a discount. However, the prices on Standard Edition Warhammer decks have been all over the place, ranging from the aforementioned roughly $40 price all the way to the high 70s, each with its own distinct pricing, might I add. Consistently too, in instances of prices all falling on individual decks, the price of the 4 deck bundle has been increased. Most offensive of all, however, is the overnight doubling of the price of collector decks and its respective bundle. Individually, the decks shot up from roughly $120 to $300 or more, while the full collection bundle rose from $560 to $1200, all before going out of stock shortly thereafter. And I would just like to quickly remind everyone that this is all in regards to Wizards' own pricing. Generally speaking, the Wizards of the Coast online storefront has been a joke, with prices on products being inconsistent and with it functioning as more of a Magic the Gathering stock market, where consumers need to pay attention to prices every single minute to hopefully score what might be the best deal. The Warhammer products have not only demonstrated this yet again, but they have shown just how extreme these price jumping tendencies can be, and will likely continue to be going forward. But unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. I've been your host, Comrade Bard, and until next time, keep things excellent. And stay tuned for the next broadcast in which we discuss old cards that have won it big this spoiler season.